All right, are we ready to talk about SAS? The reason that I decided that we should talk about this is we write a lot of emails and have for a long time for software as a service or SaaS uh, companies. And when we bring freelancers in or new hires in to help us with that, typically there's a period there in which I have to break some habits for those folks in order to get them to write SaaS emails differently from how you might be used to writing all other emails, e-commerce, um, anything for services, even win back emails and things like that. SaaS emails are a different beast largely because SaaS and SaaS marketers or we have product marketers, et cetera, involved, they're a little bit of a different beast too. And I mean that fully in a good way. It's a good kind of beast. I love all animals. Um, but let me share my screen and we're gonna walk through the things that I recommend to the newer copywriters uh, that work with us um, and that every time we get feedback from a SaaS client and it's not like, that was awesome, thanks, we're good to go. Every time that happens, it's typically because we're breaking some of these rules and some cop conversion copywriting techniques do break these rules. So um, yeah, so we're gonna dive into those. I wanted to show Lily and Puff. This is Lily, big picture. Puff is a little tiny picture. My normal photos that are in here just weren't working. So um, somehow they weren't loading in Google Slides. So I was like, all right, it's time to sub in two adorable little cats. Like really, they're sitting on the kitchen table, not allowed, and I'm taking pictures of them on it. That's how much. They own me. All right, let us write a SAS email. How to write a SAS <laughs> email. Now, I've kind of alluded to this, but the reason that, one of the primary reasons that we're, we write SAS emails differently from other emails is not because SAS buyers or customers are necessarily different from other people. It's because the first approver, which we always need to think about as copywriters, is not the customer. We need to always get our client or our team on board so that our email actually gets sent or A-B test actually gets set up, launched and run properly. We need to make sure that we're satisfying that first approver, which is the person who asked you to do the thing in the first place and their team. This sometimes means you're gonna to have to like make a strong case for your new conversion copywriting principles that you might be bringing into the organization. Typically that doesn't work as well with SAS. They want great results, they're very data driven, but it still does come down to certain conventions that need to be in place in order for that SAS marketer to feel really good about going forward with your email. So we're gonna talk about what some of those things are now. This is really how to get a SAS email approved, email that will outperform every SAS email ever, which is not to say that this won't work because typically what you're going to do is you're gonna write this SAS email it will go be tested against the control, which also has the same conventions that we're seeing here, except yours will also have conversion copywriting principles in play. You'll have a framework in mind when you're writing it. You'll be using voice of customer data. You'll be using other data to drive that email. So you will still likely outperform the control, but you're both gonna, you're at least gonna have the same things in common with the control. And that's really what we're gonna talk about here. Um, first things first, and this is like, major. Writing a SaaS email is different from writing other emails. Just like writing an e-commerce email is different from writing an email to sell a plumber's services or a dermatologist's services. It's different, accept it, and this is one of the biggest things that copywriters need to know. You will have to sound different from how you normally sound. So if you're used to writing long-form emails that are very one-to-one -one personal feeling, that would be a very big stretch for a SaaS marketer to say, cool, let's go with that. You could maybe run that after this, after you first do a set of emails that follow these basic principles or conventions, get a win out of this and then start nudging that SaaS marketer away from things that are um, the norm or that are comfortable for them. So really you, nothing that follows will matter if you don't have the discipline to recognize that a SaaS email 
has to be written differently from how you might write other emails like launch emails. Um, it needs uh, the right voice and tone. So voice and tone is always going to come up when you're talking to SaaS marketers. They typically conflate the two, voice and tone, voice and tone, like it's one word. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about, well, what's your voice and what's the tone? Just it's really a matter of voice and tone. You'll know the difference, but just know that it's uh, not that SaaS marketers don't know the difference. It's just it gets like conflated into a single idea rather than here's your voice this extends across your brand and here's the tone of the piece which is what most copywriters are thinking about um, but just know that you need to basically be on voice and there's a tone typically packed into that voice and we'll talk about all of these um, it needs to work in a designed layout or template so what does that actually mean it means you're typically going to have um, a standard template where your client may have five, six, seven different templates that they have built internally that are designed intentionally. Um, maybe it's in their CRM already or they get custom coded. That still happens, um, which is always surprising to me that people are custom coding emails one by one, but it does still happen. So it's likely to have, you know, the logo up at the top, possibly a picture, uh, definitely a footer that feels designed. It's not going to be written like a copy hackers email or like a remit study email or any of those sorts of marketers who aren't writing for SaaS. So it has to, again, this is one more convention that you need to be aware of. It cannot be very long. It just can't. It, it just can't. It just can't. It just can't. Just can't. There is that. Is it clear? Is it clear? It can't be very long. It doesn't mean it can't have a little more length than your client is comfortable with. But once you get into, oh, we're going to write a long email, I would be shocked if you got that approved to go out. Chances are very good it will get edited by the designer, by um, the marketer, by the CMO, even before it ever gets sent out. And that's what we want to avoid. So lean away from long copy when you're writing SAS emails. It needs to sound good as well. Like sound good, does it sound good is a big filter for writing SAS emails. It's basically true for all emails you write, except um, a launch email for a course, for example, doesn't need to sound good. It doesn't need to have any sort of word smithery going on at all. And I don't believe co copywriters are quote unquote wordsmiths and hopefully everybody attending this or who's heard anything from copy hackers ever knows that that is not what we're here to do. However, you have the first customer that you have to get to approve it. That first customer is um, the person who brought you in and they want it to sound good. So we're going to talk about ways to make that happen too. Voice and tone. Let us dive in very, 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 very often. And this just happened yesterday in a new lead call. I was talking to um, a software company out of San Francisco and they wanted to bring us to work with us on uh, they're redoing a bunch of different things. And they brought up that they're redoing their voice and tone. And I said, oh, so what does it sound like? The very first word, and I knew it before they said it, was friendly. It's always going to start with friendly and then there will be other words that follow it. Friendly, but whatever. Friendly and whatever. Um, and a common one as well uh, is, and even when you're talking about their voice and tone, is this idea of, oh, we take the work seriously, but not ourselves. That happens, that's a common sort of thing that a lot of SaaS marketers think, and it's good, it's a good thing. None of what I'm saying is meant to be like, that's a bad convention. It's just like insights into what these SaaS marketers are thinking. So make sure it sounds friendly and that there's a sense of taking the work seriously, not yourself, not the brand uh, seriously. So those often turn into, oh, it's, it sounds like my favorite professor during office hours. Okay, so imagine who that is and that moment in office hours, your favorite uncle. Um, maybe he's your favorite Harvard educated uncle in some cases. Um, or Jamie from project management, someone else internally who really embodies what they think their brand stands for. And so like interviewing that person can go a long way. And another one, it used to be, we want to sound like MailChimp. And increasingly, it's we want to sound like Drift. We hear this a lot, like a lot, a lot, um, which is really interesting to me, that shift that people have made. Not that they don't want to sound like MailChimp anymore. It's just that we hear more commonly, I want to sound like Drift. So voice and tone, it's likely to fall into a category like this. Basically, you're pretty safe if you are friendly, 
if it doesn't sound like you take yourself too seriously, but you definitely take the work seriously, as in if you're writing for software, the actual work that the software does is taken seriously. The way you get people into it, talking about it is not taken so quote unquote seriously. Okay, this is the actual template itself. This wide, like there's a width to this. You're not going to have a full page, um, like a full width uh, for when you think about how far, how wide an email can get. We're talking about a narrow, but not too narrow email. Basically like this, when you're writing this in a copy doc, you'll want to bring that margin, the right margin in to about, you'll see the ruler up at the top and it's about 4.5. That's where we typically write. Sometimes a little narrower and increase the size of that font as well. So it better reflects like this chunky sort of email. You have a centered headline that's a maximum of two lines. Three lines is a stretch. One line is very safe and comfortable and more likely to get that stamp of approval. Um, open with a single sentence hook. So we want one line, well, one sentence at least, and not a long sentence. Um, this is gonna be typically a question. <laughs> Honestly, if you want to play it safe in order to get your client to say yes, opening with a question, a data point, or something from a customer story really quickly goes a long way. So, um, so just start there. Then there's a standalone line that builds on the last line and makes you think a little bit. So if you asked a question in that first line, you're going to answer that question, but in a way that makes the reader go, huh. Um, and keeps them paying attention. Then you have a payoff for that line and that then introduces the feature. So you typically have, here's my hook, here's a quick one-liner to make you kind of build on that hook, payoff for that line, and then introduction of the feature that satisfies the payoff. So you just, this is basically where we start getting into the how. We typically don't open with a feature. You don't start by talking about a feature. You start by talking about, again, the question, the data point, the customer story introduce the feature, then have typically an image or a product GIF, GIF, wherever, whatever you want to call it. Um, sometimes that image can go right below the headline, but very typically we'll see SaaS marketers approve an image that's in line. Going above the copy tends to be kind of an e-commerce sort of thing to do, but an inline mess, an inline image um, tends to be approved. You've just told them what the feature is or a cool way that it solves a problem or like is the payoff for what's been discussed so far. Um, and then you want to show them that in actions that again might be a GIF. Videos, I think are still difficult to embed there. You can embed them, but playing requires that you go to a new uh, spot. Uh, so it's just a GIF is what we typically recommend in there. And then you talk about the feature. Now you get to get into it. Typically, you can phrase that as with X feature. So put that feature name in there. You can, and then tell them what they can achieve, what they can get done, what they can do. And then you have the rule of three. So you can do this, do this, do this. And that's really a really safe format for writing a SaaS email. Um, you can have bullets that follow that expand on it. Those are optional. They don't have to happen. If you don't have those buttons, then that quick, clever final line down at the bottom will typically end in the same paragraph as the with X feature you can. So if you take those bullets out, then that final clever, quick line will move up to finish off the paragraph. And then we have a button. This may seem like, oh, obvious, but it's not. It's definitely not obvious and it is the shortest path following this quote unquote template is the shortest path to getting your email approved by that SaaS marketer. This is a very safe starting place. Your job is to make sure the hook is a really good one, one that the standalone line is really good, that the headline is really good. Even if it has to be a little shorter to get approved, that's really solid. Everything that goes into this template is your job to make awesome. And that can be, of course, how you actually get it to beat the control, which looks exactly the same as this in most cases. So here's an example. This is a little long. All of my emails for Wistia were uncomfortably long for them, and it would have been very difficult for them to approve these emails if there wasn't already somebody internally who was like, we're doing what Joe says. We're just going to do it that's the test. That was Andrew, um, Andrew Kaplan, who has since moved on to a different role elsewhere. 
Um, but he was a big part of making these Wistia emails actually happen and get tested. And of course, we've talked about these a lot. These are the ones that brought in 3.5 times the paid conversions. The control looked like this email. And these are what our emails look like too. So we followed those conventions. Centered headline, that's a max of two lines. A single sentence hook. Now this was a big -er question to ask. We didn't want to have a big stack of like three, a three line paragraph to open an email. No one feels comfortable with that. So we broke that up. Then you have a standalone line. This is a bit of a longer one, but it's got the 6%. It's got some numbers in there. Payoff for that line image or product GIF. And in this case, we had a GIF where you would show people what that turnstile is. And then we explain what that feature is, what it does for you, how it works. And then we have a quick uh, final line and then that CTA. So it's, this, is, this is the basic format for all of them, but these are longer. This one's longer than you're likely to get approved unless you have somebody going, oh, hells yes, we're doing whatever that person says. And that is not always the case for us. We have to follow the convention show out on the left here in order to get that approved. It was just Wistia took a big chance. Canva took a big chance as well. Doodle, people like that. But that doesn't mean that everybody always will. Okay, then we want to make it sound good. How do you make things sound good? This is really where being a reader who is a writer goes a long way. The more you read, the better you are as a writer. We all know that. And I do not mean only reading what's on Facebook. That's not reading. That's not reading. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're reading things. Obviously, we're all writers of some kind in the room. Uh, so that's the best way to, of course, start learning how to make things sound good. Just pay attention and copy what other people do to structure their sentences. Um, wordplay in your headline. That's a great place to use wordplay. Try focusing on short, 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 short words. Uh, maybe one lengthier word in there just to break up that staccato sort of nature of it. Uh, sentence fragments. You don't have to have long sentences that are painful or hard to get through. Um, having empathy for your busy reader and writing an email goes a long way in a SAS email in particular. Um, do a sweep to make sure you're removing any scary words or work words like learn um, is a very scary word. It's a work word. Uh, things like that we want to cut out, make them feel friendly, make everything feel easy and desirable. Um, and then writerly rhetorical devices. And I'm going to actually discuss a couple rhetorical devices right now to give examples of how to make things sound good. Antithesis. Okay, so here's an example uh, from the WIST, one of the Wistia emails. And again, we're only really showing the Wistia emails in here because those are the ones that we have full approval to use wherever for whatever, um, rather than ones for like Shopify and things like that. So a word, phrase, or sentence opposes the original statement. So it opens with it's good to be powered by Wistia. It's best to lead with your brand. So the opening line is the statement, but then we're building and saying kind of not the opposite, but it's in opposition to that opening line. It's a writerly thing. It's antithesis. This is a very hard word to say, and I always want to put an N before that, that T. Polysyndeton, you're welcome for me trying that. And this is where we're going to use more conjunctions than necessary. So we have here in the headline, what's read and unsupported and stuck in the middle of. Instead of saying what's read, comma, unsupported, and stuck in the middle of, we're adding in those ands to keep drawing attention to kind of build up this idea of lots and lots of things. Uh, so that's a bit of chaos going on. There's more happening in there than if we just had commas and it felt like a normal everyday sort of sentence. So there is that. And then there's this sense of tricolons, which I only learned about very recently. I didn't know we were doing it, but I learned what it's called. Um, and this is where you have three words or phrases in quick succession. And you'll see that a lot, but this is a technique just like the other two. There are techniques that you can use, go in to make things sound better. So we have three words or phrases in quick succession, usually with commas, but no conjunction. Um, so this is a bit like the opposite of the polysyndeton. Okay, so we have, you can add a turnstile at the beginning of a video, at the end, or an exact point on your timeline that's broken up with periods, but we still have this tricolon effect going on. Grow your list, fill your CRM, let your marketing videos do the work they're meant to do. This is all part of not just making things sound good, but because these sorts of techniques have been used since forever, they register really well in the reader's head as like, that sounds good. 
And so if you can tap into that, instead of trying to make up your own rules, just start like studying rhetorical devices and practicing using them, then you can um, make things sound good. And that's part of the objective here. So to get a SAS email approved, again, have the discipline to write it differently. When you go into writing a SAS email, don't start by saying, how can I employ techniques that I used in e-commerce to this? That might be your second test once you get the first winner. Um, and to get the first winner, follow this. Write voice and tone, follow that template I showed you. Don't make it too long, um, make it sound good. And again, don't write it like it's for e-commerce or for services. Now, this is, as a final note, how to get your SaaS copy approved. From there, you have to, of course, make sure that it still works and follows those conversion and copywriting principles. Okay, thanks everyone. We have a couple more Tutorial Tuesdays before it's end of year. Can you even believe how fast it happens? Like, I'm shopping online in September, but like you're like, no, it's too soon to buy any of that. And now it's like, it's too late to buy any of that. How did this happen, Angela? I don't know. We had grass outside like what, three days ago? And now there's like a foot and a half of snow. I know we have little rose bushes. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna be so pro and like put something around my rose bushes <laughs> this year. No, they're completely covered in snow. They're gone. I apologize to the roses of the world, especially in my backyard. All right, y'all, have a good rest of your week. Stay hopeful and optimistic, as we shall as well. Um, good, and uh, we'll see you on our next Tutorial Tuesday. Thanks, everyone.